Hey, it's Ian. Welcome to video three of four in this new series where it's my goal to transform your forehand into a reliable weapon. I want you to have the best of both worlds. High degree of accuracy and consistency and also a big amount of offense on that side so that you can dictate points and beat better players than you are right now. Now in order to make that happen you need three different elements. You need placement with your forehand, you need power, and you need curve. In video one and two of this series we talked about placement and power. If you have not seen those already there's going to be links right around this video someplace. Make sure that you start with placement then watch power and then watch curve because these concepts build on top of themselves. Today we're going to focus on curve which is topspin. And this is really the element that allows you to hit with a lot of racket head speed, a lot of aggressiveness and offensiveness, but still have a wide margin for error so that you don't shoot yourself in the foot and beat yourself with unforced errors when you try to hit with more offensiveness. So let's get right to the lessons focused on curve. So when it comes to creating topspin, especially heavy topspin, a topspin that at least there's enough of it to significantly change the flight of the ball, which is the whole point, to curve the ball, to shape the ball, the fundamental issue that is non-negotiable that you must have is a significant vertical motion of your racket. Rather than have the focus of its motion towards your target, now the, the racket is going to be moving past the ball vertically, upwards. If you don't have that, you don't have topspin. Now to most people this kinesthetically just doesn't make sense. They see their target right in front of them and so it's most intuitive for most people to swing in that direction. And I think this is probably one of the biggest reasons why a lot of players don't ever achieve topspin or at least not enough to make much difference in their game is it doesn't make sense to feel like they're swinging this way when their target is that way. But to begin with she's going to start with her hand on the throat of the racket and she's not going to take the racket back at all. Instead she's going to put the racket in front of her with her racket head pointed down towards the court and she's going to leave her racket there Bow, uh, drop a ball to herself and turn the racket around in a circle. So her starting position is with the racket head pointed down and as she hits the ball she's going to turn it around in a circle and basically she's going to trace about three quarters of a full circle or so as she comes around with the racket head. So her goal here is to make contact with the ball with her racket's only movement being vertical coming up and around. And as she does that, you'll notice that the path of the ball is very, very arced. There's a big upward path and then the ball quickly comes back down again. And depending on how big of a screen you're viewing this on and what detail of the video is, you'll notice possibly that the ball is rotating very aggressively forwards. I would ask Kirby at this point, all right Kirby, continue to turn your racket, but I want all your shots that you hit to land halfway between the net and the service line, so the middle of the service box. So anything that lands deeper than that, she's pushing forward too much with her racket. We want the ball to just go straight up. Nice. There we go. So we're getting a really exaggerated now loop or curve of the ball. Let's do th last three. And this is just the very beginnings of getting a feel for that vertical, nice, acceleration. Now she's going to bring her hand down onto the grip of the racket, start with the racket lower now that she's not choked up anymore and move through that basically that exact same motion but now with her hand down where she would normally grip the racket for her forehand ground stroke. So she's tracing about three quarters of a circle, turning the racket head around and her goal is to just strike the ball as the racket is coming up vertically, not push the ball forward at all. And as before, she'll just drop to herself, turn the racket around, nice. Now what we're going to do as Kirby gets set up is she's going to start with her racket head up instead of starting with it down. Now the key here is from her starting position here, the head needs to drop before she goes up towards the ball or else topspin's impossible. If she starts with the racket head up and it only falls to here, 
then she will not make topspin. Just won't happen, at least not at uh, waist high contact point. If the ball is way higher than this, then maybe it's possible, but from a, a standard contact point, it won't be possible. So she'll start with it up, practice uh, dropping the head down before coming up to the ball, and in the same feeling, she will turn the racket head over in a circle to bring it up vertically past the ball. So you're going to be looking at home for a, a big arc of the ball, exaggerated curve of the ball. And I'm going to challenge Kirby here. Kirby, I want your shots to land inside the service line and be f at least four feet over the nets. So I'm giving her really specific, there we go parameter to follow, you'll notice that she had a more exaggerated curve that time. Her other shots had topspin, but if I'm working with a student that has never been able to hit topspin successfully before, then I want him or her to really get a feel of what kind of an exaggerated motion is like. And the last three Kirby hit, and that one included, had a really pronounced curve to the shape of the ball, and that's what we're looking for. Topspin can really start to be used as a weapon or an, an offensive advantage when you combine the path of the racket that we've been talking about with really aggressive acceleration. Now, if as you try harder to accelerate the racket, you also flatten out your swing and you start to swing more lateral towards your target, then it negates what you were going for and you'll end, up, you'll end up hitting harder, but it'll be flatter and straighter and you'll lose that arc and that consistency and you'll also lose the, the big kick off of the court that you see from high level players when they really, really go after the ball with heavy topspin and the ball kicks up off the other side of the court. Uh, so I'm just gonna have Kirby really go after a couple here and we're looking for a ball that goes over the top of the net by I would say at least three feet with a really aggressive swing. So that means a really vertical attack at the ball with big acceleration. That was a good example there. But Kirby, let me see you go um, like 70% spin and 30% drive with a really aggressive swing. Yep. And now really go after it really, really aggressively. Sorry, a little bit of a low feed there. Nice. So Kirby's getting a big bounce off my side of the court here. Really going after it aggressively. And it's really fun to hit the ball this way because Kirby's really, really accelerating aggressively. But because she's accelerating vertically, she's getting big height over the net and a big curve down towards the court, which means it's very, very safe. If I asked her to hit a foot over the, ne over the net with 70% drive and 30% spin, her consistency would drop substantially. Of course, those would be very effective shots, but you need to be able to find the right combination for you that has a good mix of challenge for your opponents and consistency 